Okay, welcome everyone. Grab a seat for the last people who are still standing so we can start. Welcome everyone to this session called Is ChatGPT a better software developer than me? So in this 45 minutes, we'll try to find out if we're all going to be obsolete in, a, in some time or if we still have a future for us as software developers. Um, this session actually started off as an experiment or joke. Uh, well, when we were playing around with AI, um, and well, ChatGPT was generating some some nice text for us. So we came up with the experiment: what would happen if we would let ChatGPT create a session abstract and submit that to conferences? So that's what we did. Uh, I came up with the title, asked that to ChatGPT, send it to FutureTech, and then. Then we had to come here <laughs> and create a session. <laughs> so, well, in the end, we did a session, and now we're here. Right, so yep. to quickly introduce ourselves, my name is Geert van der Kaiser. I work as a uh, cloud architect at a uh, consulting firm called Experian in the Netherlands, where I basically help other companies build better software by using the cloud, uh, software architecture, and DevOps practices. Yeah, my name is uh, Thijs Limme. I work at the same company, doing about the same stuff. Um, and today we are being assisted by our uh, AI, I would say. Um, I think it's nice to know for you that all the content you will see is also generated by AI. So uh, I think that's a nice uh, touch yeah. to our presentation. We so try to infuse as much AI into this, um, into this deck, into the demos, etc., to to see what is possible by using AI. So if if you see any background images and there's um, uh, the description below on how we actually generated these images. And you will see them throughout the, the talk, and you will, we will also uh, explain that a bit later on uh, in the talk. But just yes. so you know, uh, if you see some cool background images, they were actually generated by AI. Okay, let's get started. This, this whole AI thing, right? we also saw it in the keynote, it's, it's the big hype. It's going to replace everything that we do. But AI is it's really something that's, that's been here for, for quite a while. Why is it so, so different now? Why, why is it so relevant right now? Because back in the 50s, um, Alan Turing already created the Turing test, right? A test to see if you're actually talking to a computer or a human, to see the difference between a computer and a human. So back then, uh, there were already doubts to see, well, am I talking to a human or a computer? And back then, it was really hard to um, to detect that. So AI really started from there. And, and in, the, in the 50s, uh, um, the Dartmouth Re Research Project started, and they really defined the different types of what AI is and what intelligence is. So what they did is they came up with five different types of AI, knowledge representation, natural language processing, reasoning, perception, and planning. And all of these areas, they all have their own uh, path that they follow through uh, history. And on, on several of these areas, computers are actually even better than humans. At just natural language pr processes. Computers can do this better than humans. But the thing that we, as humans, are really good at is combining all these things. So combining all these different areas is what makes us humans still uh, relevant. <laughs> but what happened is when things like ChatGPT and other tools uh, came about, well, the last couple of years, is that they start really combining a number of these, uh, these AI paths together into one tool or one service. So that's where really when they're trying to, they're really changing the world in how we, uh, how we do certain things. So the, the term ChatGPT was, was already mentioned quite often in the keynote and the, the sessions before. Who of you is using it in their work, like when, when writing code? OK, some hands, not, not that many hands. So yeah, and who is using it daily? Yeah, so, so that's about 10%. OK, and maybe, maybe other tools, Copilot then? Yeah. Also, some hands, not, not that much. Okay. So uh, about 10% uh, use uh, AI often. So 
that's not so much, I would say. But let's go see what we can do with uh, ChatGPT. So yeah, let's, let's, let's try uh, to push ChatGPT yeah. as a software developer to see what it what is capable of, especially for the people who don't use it yeah. on a daily basis. So yeah, our question, of course, is will it replace us? Uh, let's investigate. So let's go to the demo. So oh, I didn't need to ch close it, but so here we have uh, ChatGPT. So uh, we we thought about the prompt. Uh, uh, we want to create uh, email validation, like that. What we all have done once in the past. Uh, so I want you uh, to act as a, a C sharp uh, backend backend developer. I will give you the the type of input and you will create a validator. So this is a prompt where we set up ChatGPT to act as uh, an actor and C sharp backend developer. So it uh, it will now it will ask me to input a uh, type of input. So I would say email. So it, it knows uh, I'm a C sharp developer, so it already starts generating an email validation method. So within um, a few seconds, it created a regex, right? So who, who of you would could do this faster than uh, <laughs> by themselves, right? <laughs> Maybe you can copy it from Stack Overflow, but yeah, it doesn't contain the best answers. Um, so now we have an email validation, and of course your boss wants you to have 100% code coverage, so let's uh, create unit tests. So it's going to give us some examples of unit tests. Um, as you see, uh, it's generating unit tests now, about four of them, but you can make it create even more unit tests. But also, this is uh, created using n unit, but you might use a different framework in, in your uh, C sharp project. So let's, uh, I will say, I am using uh, x unit. So by saying I am using, you are changing the context of the AI. So in the follow up prompt, it will also only use x unit. So here you see I'm, I'm getting facts. That's what x unit does. So yeah, th this is an. A method. We could also maybe say uh, create a, a .NET Core API method uh, from yeah, like this. So now it's creating an API controller, uh, which does email validation. Um, and yeah, nice that we have code, but we also want to deploy it, uh, of course, through a GitHub pipeline. So create a GitHub pipeline. So now it's generating uh, a build that's triggered on a main. When you push to main, it will. It knows that uh, it, we're using .NET 6. Well, it doesn't really know, but uh, we have to restore uh, our packages. It will build our application. It knows we are, have unit tests, so it also added uh, unit uh, unit test uh, runner for it. And after it will publish test results. So it doesn't yet publish this to the cloud. So um, yeah. We want to do it to the cloud, right? Maybe I want to uh, publish it to the cloud. <coughs> do, the, do the Azure cloud, because otherwise. <coughs> yeah, uh, so I'm sub, sub generating. Uh, I want, want a type. Make it push the web API to yeah. a push the uh, Azure web app. Web API <coughs> to an Azure web app. Using the uh, GitHub pipeline. It knows, I, I, I think. <laughs> This is the demo effect. So uh, I want to uh, create a pipeline that pushes it to Azure as web web app. OK, so now it's going to build, test, and deploy. So that's, uh, that's nice. Uh, but we don't have the infrastructure yet. So where do we want to publish it to? Azure Cloud, you would say, in the web app. Yeah, let's, so let's, let, let it create some infrastructure as code as well, right? So. Uh, Going full circle, create some code, unit test, deploy it, create some infrastructure as code, all the things that we do on a daily basis. It uh, infrastructure structure in Azure uh, to host this web app. So it already knows the context about a web app, so 
it will pro now it, it will <laughs> say to use uh, the AZ CLI, but of course uh, this is not really the best way of doing infrastructure as code. So we want to uh, use Terraform or Bicep. What what do we want? What do you want? <laughs> bicep. Okay, bicep? let's do Bicep. Nice. <clears throat> Uh, I am using bicep. <coughs> so this model is trained uh, like two years ago, so it will not come up with like the most recent uh, uh, infrastructure as code. But uh, as as these models progress, it will become more and more real time. So uh, at one point, you will also see the more uh, recent uh, deployment yeah. files. So it also tells us how to deploy the bicep. So we have a template, and it also tells us how to deploy that exact template. OK, let's, let's get one more thing from the others. What, what, name one programming thing that we could, could add to this. Pulumi. Anyone? What? Pulumi. Pulumi. OK, but then I'll go ahead for the other one, because we already have the context. I am using Pulumi. Uh, Pulumi. So here is uh, one for Pulumi. I guess I haven't used it that much, but uh, is this Pulumi? <laughs> Looks legit, yeah. Yeah. I could also ask it, do you, ha do you know any other ways of deploying it? So it can also give me more ideas like Pulumi, which I may have never heard of. So you could also use it to get a lot of ideas about how you could do things. Yeah. OK, let's, let's get back to the slide. Yeah, let's get back. So that's uh, our quick demo. So looking at this, um, what's your impressions? Uh, are you scared yet as a software developer? Are we still relevant, or is this, this thing going to take over? Raise your hand if you're a bit scared. <laughs> Only a few are scared. Or okay. very scared. <coughs> nah, a bit scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I've, well, OK, then who, who's impressed by all these things then? And, and yeah. do you want to use it now uh, on a daily basis when you're writing code? <laughs> yeah, I think it's really it is going to change the way how we write code, right? So, yeah, AI is really nice in in helping us generate this code, getting us, uh, giving us a head start to to do certain things. But there's also um, well some weaknesses in AI models, right? Yeah, there are a lot of weaknesses. I thought you would. Uh, do oh yeah, no. So um, one of the things is that well, it's it it's trained on a Certain um, certain knowledge, right? So it doesn't know all the knowledge. So new features, it doesn't know about that. Um, also, it can uh, it can make stuff up. So it it's not always giving you a 100% correct answer. So sometimes it's just coming up with things like certain properties that that don't even exist. So you still, as a developer, have to know what is right and what is wrong. But it's also very strong because it's uh, generating things you, you would not do in, in five minutes. And mm -hmm. it's also giving you a lot of inspiration and ideas. And yeah. it's, it could be sometimes racist or it could have a bias and all the things you read about in the news. But that should not prevent you from using something like this because it, it really enhances your, your job. And it's only, it, it, give, it gives you certain ideas. You don't have to copy and paste everything like it's a Stack Overflow post, right? So it, it can give you some inspiration. And you still, as a developer, can decide how to use it in a certain way. So how we see ChatGPT is more like an experienced expert junior developer, <laughs> right? It comes up with a lot of great ideas, but it, it doesn't know all. It doesn't know everything. It doesn't know how to how certain things work, or it, it does make certain mistakes. But it's it's really great to do pair programming with some someone like that. So it, it has so many ideas that you can just borrow from. Um, so that's that's how we try to to interact with it. Just see it as pair programming with someone who has a lot of knowledge. It could write that same code as we just did in, in Python or Java or whatever language that I have never uh, programmed in. So yeah, it, it's great to, to get all that knowledge just at your fingertips and being able to interact with it. So coming back to the question that was our, um, uh, was our title of the, um, of the session, 
is it going to replace developers? Um, basically, our answer is no, it's not going to replace you yet. Um, <laughs> But it will, you will probably be replaced by someone who is using these AI tools uh, to do uh, development work. Because if you're pair programming with such a tool, you can be so much more productive compared to someone who is not. Um, especially seeing that this is only the early stages of these tools, right? They've only been here for a year or so. So let's see in a, in a couple of years, well, if you completely ignore these kind of tools, I really think you will be uh, obsolete compared to people who do use these tools. Yeah. So yeah, you might not be replaced by the AI itself, you will re be replaced by someone else. Yeah. So now it might make up stuff, but I would I think in like one or two years it will be better and better. And you even heard you could should not do timelines, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, okay. I, I like to do timelines. Yeah. Um, so what we think is we should set you up as a developer who really knows how to use these certain tools, how to become a better developer and being empowered by these tools. And that's what we're going to do in the rest of the session. So all right. So away. yeah, uh, nice that we gave you all this information. But how can you become more, become a better developer using AI and become more efficient? Um, so first, you really need to make a mindset shift. Instead of uh, asking Google or Stack Overflow, ask it ChatGPT for once, or for once, every time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it, uh, it gives a lot of pretty good answers. Uh, skip Google. Yeah, I, I repeat this, but it was really funny. I asked uh, this image generator to imagine Google, and it came up with all this uh, left out places with uh, like a Google logo <laughs> on top. So <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't uh, find it on the internet. It gave it on my own generation. So I'm pretty proud of this. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you want to ask something to ChatGPT, I already showed you in the demo uh, is um, uh, it's really about uh, asking it in a s certain way. Um, the important thing is that I want you to act as, and then a job title, like c -sharp developer, marketing, uh, whatever you can think of that's another job, basically. Uh, you will tell him um, what, I, I, you will tell the AI uh, what the input is, like email address in my demo or whatever, and you will ask it what he needs to do with it. So what you then can do is repeat a lot of uh, steps. <coughs> Uh, after you set the context. And then you can also refine it a little bit, like uh, you want to be it more specific or limited, or, uh, and reply with, OK, uh, ChatGPT would, could only do blah, 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 uh, give some information. If you say OK, then it will say OK, I will shut up. Uh, that's pretty nice. Um, there's also a nice website um, where you can find a lot of prompts. That's called uh, prompts.chat. And here you can find all kinds of crazy things what people thought of about. I think if you read with me, then you can see a lot of funny examples. So uh, go look at this website, and it, you can find a lot of fun examples uh, or job replacements. <laughs> but yeah, we are not done yet, of course. This is just ChatGPT. Um, so Geert, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot more tools powered by AIs also on the market that might also be uh, interesting for you as developers, right? And you, you probably heard about Bing, which is now also being powered by ChatGPT. Um, what I really like about, um, about Bing is it, it is connected to the internet, right? While uh, the model of ChatGPT is, is not actually going to the internet to search certain things. So, what Bing does is actually combining the power of ChatGPT with the power to go search for certain facts. So what you could ask is questions like this. How many Coke bottles do fit in a Tesla Model 3 trunk? It doesn't know all these facts, but it will search for um, the size of a Tesla Model 3 trunk. It will search for the size of a Coke bottle and then do the calculations by itself. So these are really powerful things that you could ask this um, on Bing, and, and in the end, it's 
it's basically the same as uh, as a chat that you would do with with chat GPT. Uh, this is still, I think, limited. You have to sign up for it. But um, well, I got in quite fast. So if you just sign up for it, uh, yeah. Bing has the rule: if you install their app and their browser, then you get uh, more priority. In yeah, but list. I didn't so even you do have that. to <coughs> yeah. yeah sell your soul to Bing, and then you can use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in, <laughs> for, for most coding things, ChatGPT works better because. Um, Bing is still limited to a, a number of, of prompts that you do in, in one, uh, one line. But for combining such a um, facts, uh, Bing can really help you. Then we have GitHub Copilot, which we're also demoing yep. in, a, in a bit. But it's really a, um, a, a language model uh, similar to ChatGPT that's really integrated into your IDE. So within Visual Studio or VS Code, uh, while coding, it will help you come up with certain ideas, uh, which is also also really great. Yeah, I'm going to demonstrate it. So yeah, we did so the, the simple demo or uh, like a default demo. And then now it is more like an advanced demo, like how you can use it in your daily work and really integrate it with your uh, development. So I would go to my Visual Studio. Uh, I made it white, which I really hate, but I have to get used to it. Um, <laughs> So let's start. Um, at Xperit, we have a kind of a fun concept. It's called a beer exchange. So every time someone visits a city somewhere in the world, we bring a beer and then we sign it up in our beer exchange. So this is the GitHub repo. And you say, see that we haven't upgraded it for four years. So uh, like Corona came and then we just stopped doing this. Um, so this is the website. Um, it's showing beers that people checked in. Uh, pretty fun website, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's lagging behind. It's a uh, it's a web website that is uh, .NET Core 2, uh, which is pretty old already. Um, and now we're going to use AI to to upgrade it, upgrade this website into yep. into the future. Like so, a, a yeah. What you usually do with .NET Core upgrades is a lot of uh, stuff needs to be changed inside the startup. Um, so what I'm going to do is I will copy this. And then I have a chat GPT uh, terminal inside my Visual Studio code. And I will ask it. Which is um, just a plugin that you can install, yeah. right? So yeah. uh, if, you, if you just go to VS Code and install a search for plugins, search for chat GPT, and you get this. Uh, and you can easily uh, copy paste code from that uh, to your code, et cetera, which is really nice. I'm using .NET 6.0 because the model is trained from like 2021 and .NET 8 was not around back then. So um, it can help me doing that, but it doesn't give that accurate yeah. results. And you, you paste it in the code like with these three ticks, yeah. three back ticks like you would do in Markdown. So it, it actually knows that that is a, a part of, uh, of the code. So now it's already generating my code. As you see, it's using the uh, flat syntax instead of a uh, class. So it's using a top level syntax. And it's also saw that um, before it uses add MVC, but now it uses map controllers. But it will also explain me what kind of changes it made. So I will select this. I will put insert. And now I migrated my project. But I'm not finished yet because it's still using .NET 2. So in my CS project, I also need to make some slight changes. So I will do exactly the same. Want to mic want to migrate the following code to .NET 6.0 with the same markdown syntax. Chat GPT also gives us th th his results in markdown, so it knows markdown as input. Resolution is not really helping to show show everything, but yeah. most developers at home they will have uh, bigger screens, I guess, and higher resolution. So, so you see, it's uh, already giving us some nice results. So I'm also inserting this. Uh, so you see, it upgraded them to a six, and it's uh, I don't use Serilog, so it dreamed about I'm using Serilog, and also. Uh, it uses Swagger, and I thought there were some new libraries. So it doesn't. Here, this is the right one, I think. So it does dream about some things that are not correct, and I also think it correlated this uh, CS project with the the startup uh, C sharp I already uh, put in before. So it made some links. So let's now see if it runs. 
first we need to restore it, but I cannot restore it because I have one file that's uh, yeah. blocking me. So I have to remove that. Then I'm still restoring. So it restored the packages that do exist. Um, see if it builds. <coughs> now I'm trying to run it. Of course, I get in an error. I could go ahead and paste this error inside ChatGPT, and it might tell me what I should do to fix it. But okay. for now, I know what I need to do. I need to remove the program, and I need to rename startup to program, because that's yeah. the, the new way of .NET, of uh, yeah. configuring uh, your project. Because of time, we didn't do this. But in a workflow, it really helps if you just get certain code from ChatGPT, <coughs> if you run into uh, problems, if you then uh, copy your error message and, and uh, paste that into ChatGPT, it will really help you uh, come up with solutions to, to fix that problem. So it's, it's yeah. really good at, at doing those kind of things as well. So yeah, it misses some imports, so I'm still fixing my code to make sure that all imports are there. Um, and it, is, it does have all the imports, so that's nice. Um, so now my program is almost working. Not fully, but that's okay. Um, but we don't really have the time to figure out. But um, if this worked, I could show you that my .NET API was running and uh, it didn't block me from running it anymore. So it was all green. I still had to make some slight changes to do authentication right. And but but it helps you with like 80 to 90 percent of your code, and then the last 10 percent you still have to fill in yourself. But that saves you from doing 80 percent of the stuff and reading a lot of documentation. Um, so yeah, of course, I prepared that this would happen. And so I'm resetting this, and I will check out a branch where I've already done this. So, so let's restore it. Then I will run it. .NET run. So now we're also going to add some more features to the tool using AI. So we, we've seen that it can write certain code, right? But let's also see um, if we can enhance our application using, uh, using AI as well. So I already prepared something because I didn't want to make too much code. But I, as you see, I added an explain button at the end. Uh, and if I press it, I want it to explain the bear. So as inputs, I'm giving it these things, and then it should explain me what kind of beer it is. So let's uh, start doing it. Um, so I have a, I can close this for a second. I have a beer controller, of course, and I'm, um, now I'm in my code. So now uh, Copilot is assisting me. So you see, Copilot is already thinking like, hey, you, you got an API, but you're missing a, a change method or put method. But I want a method to explain my beer, so uh, a, a get uh, method explain my beer by ID. So when I press enter, it will tell me, hey, you might want an HTTP method. I clicked it away. Yeah, you want this. Then it will tell me, hey, you need to have this. And then it will already tell me, oh, to get a beer, uh, then you, we already have this method for you, so uh, far bear is, and then bear service dot explain my bear. But we want to get an existing bear because I'm not gonna do this in the bear service. That takes a bit too much time. Uh, it's missing a return path. So let's now start implementing uh, Open AI, mm -hmm. right? In, in inside our code. So Chat GPT inside our C sharp code. So to do this. Um, I need to have a package. I will go to my notes because um, I need to have this package installed. Well, it probably doesn't know about this package because it's <coughs> pretty new. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, include it. Yeah, it might be that Bing does know because it is connected to yeah. the internet and it it's knows all the, the newer answers. But yeah, ChatGPT knows everything up until 2021 somewhere. So things that happened afterwards, it doesn't know about. So let's restore it, then it will install the package. And to make it work, I only need to do this. 
don't remember the API key because it's my personal one. <laughs> <laughs> but I will refocus it after the session, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I will add this to the uh, program.c sharp, import it. Now I made the connection with ChatGPT. It's that simple. Um, so let's start uh, with importing the AI, open AI service. So Copilot already knew that yeah, I, I was doing You really doing clicked stuff. it away really fast, but yeah. uh, Copilot Sorry, already yeah. saw like, okay, you added this NuGet package, you added this thing to the program CS. Okay, you're want, you want to add something to your constructor. It's probably that uh, that thing that you just added, right? So, so yeah. it's really like the um, wor working together with Copilot and ChatGPT, feeding and helping each other, right? It's really embracing AI in your uh, developer <laughs> workflow. So I want to make this a property um, that didn't work. So I will create the property here. Chat GPT would be faster. So that works. Uh, now you remove the beer service. Uh, uh, yes. Online 23. Yeah. Yes, you're right. <coughs> See, I'm already worse than ChatGPT. Almost. I will just do this because, yeah, now it worked. <coughs> so let's start uh, um, asking ChatGPT if he could uh, explain a beer for me. So what I can do is open AI surface, uh, uh, this, this, that. Open AI service, and then chat completion is what it wants. I would uh, make a create completion. Uh, that's uh, I could also make it a stream. Uh, you see that chat GPT like typing in the browser. If you make it a stream, it will uh, constantly give you input which you can feed into your browser, but that, that you also need like signal R and stuff, but that's too complex. So let's just... Uh, Create a completion. I hope that Copilot would already give me a suggestion. But let's crea create a completion request. All right, so what it expects is the, the model that I need to use. So as a model, I can say, um, I think it was a model.beer addition. I will look into my notes very quickly. Yeah, it needs this. So I want to use the turbo variant of ChatGPT. This is the faster AI model. And then I'm going to ask uh, it some prompts. So first, I'm going to add some messages. A new list of uh, chat message, it was called. Then I will add the chat message. And so now I'm going to give it the prompts that I did in my previous demo, so it already thought about something, but this is not what I want. I want to make a chat message dot, and then a system prompt. This is like setting the context for ChatGPT, and I want to uh, have a user prompt, like the input uh, for my beers. Um, so let's start prompting it. Uh, system prompt is, uh, and then, I don't know if you know this, but this is a new syntax where you can just put in plain uh, strings. I want you to act as a Cicerone. That's like a, a sommelier, but then for beer, if you didn't know that yet. Um, nice facts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had to put them in front. Um, I will give you the details of my beer and you will give me a, an explanation of that beer. Uh, I want you to be uh, convincing uh, so that my uh, users or friends, <laughs> friends will buy this beer. Of course, friend, you want to please your friends. Uh, and I also want you to make it uh, one Paragraph because it will then give me a lot of uh, content. That's maybe we don't want that. Th so that's the system prompt, and then for my user prompt, it 
I think it already knew it. No, uh, I, I'm going to give it details of my bear. Bear dot name and bear dot brewery. I think I have to say brewery is this and uh, name is this. So I think this is enough. I'm going to add it here and here. Uh, response. So now I'm going to await it. Await response dot. I think I want to have auto completion. So I already became very, uh, uh, let's say, lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm going to look at my comments. backspace and typing it again it's, to see the new prompts. It's already yeah. making me a lazy developer. So I'm going to just copy paste this. So we want the uh, completion result to be successful. If it's uh, successful, then return uh, the, the prompt. And if it was not successful, oh, I need to await this. That's the reason. Yeah, yeah right. I think you need to change the yeah. method as well. It's yes. like ID slash explain instead. Explanation result is what I was creating. New explanation result. Explanation is, I hope it, yeah, it already filled it in for me. That's nice. And then return new. Yeah, so that's Copilot helping me again, which is very nice. And this missing something. I think it's this compile, so also let's see if it works. You have to change line 44 to ID slash explain instead of the other way around. Uh, yes, right, that was one thing that's... Uh, <coughs> So of course, uh, the copilot did not know how the API should look that we were expecting from the front end because it it's in a different project. So now you see that it's making a request to the OpenAI completion endpoint, and we should w have to wait a bit because if you use the stream, it will give you the intermediate results, but I had to wait for the complete results, so it took a little bit longer. So you see, it gave uh, welcome friends. Today I would like to introduce you to my all-time favorite beer, the Chubby Chink Marshmallow Milk Stout. <laughs> so it's uh, already very convincing, this, uh, this text. So it, it didn't keep it to one paragraph, but, uh, but Maybe still. I can uh, <laughs> make it a little bit bigger, and that doesn't work for alerts. Um, but as you see, I created very little code to really add a great feature to my, to my website. And you can do this with all kinds of uh, use cases. And it's very easy to integrate. Um, I could also give you some other tips, like uh, we could also ask it to make my code better. So I can here right click it. And with the same ChatGPT plugin, I can also tell it to optimize my code. So it's going to think of a uh, better solution of making this code. I can ask, also ask it to create unit tests and a lot of other things, but you have to experiment a little bit. And this is um, a, a, a community-made plugin, but you also have Copilot, which, which is from Microsoft, which has about the same features. You can ask it to make your code more readable, fix bugs, debug code, so it will explain you what code does, uh, list the steps. It, it, can, it, it can extract code, that's junk, like extract method. Um, so you can uh, make huge improvements to your code base doing this. Yeah, let's go back. I to think the that's the demo. So we've seen what it can do when, when writing code, but there's, there's more stuff that we need to do when, uh, as developers, right? We often <laughs> want other things as well that, that you might use uh, other people for that, that have certain skills, right? For example, uh, images within your application. If you need certain placeholder images or, or uh, images created for, uh, with with people on it, uh, we already for saw your the, slides. Yeah, we already saw Dali uh, in the in the previous uh, in the keynote, right? So Dali is nice, but I was really impressed by by other tools. For example, Midjourney. 
Anyone here tried Mid Journey before? Some hands. Uh, I would really highly recommend trying to play around with this um, because it's like uh, Dolly on steroids. Uh, all of the background uh, images in our presentation were, were made with, uh, with Mid, Mid Journey. So for example, what you can ask it, um, can you come up with a beautiful dashboard with some colors and then <coughs> it comes up with this? Well, you don't, you don't use this one-on-one, -on -one, but it can give you great inspiration on, on how you should design your UI if you don't have a designer, right? Um, uh, there, are all, there are also tools that could help you translate these kind of things into, into CSS, et cetera, but that's, that's different tools. Um, other things, come up with a landing page for, um, a, for a website. Um, <laughs> Different variation. Yeah, different variations <laughs> of that same website. It's, it really gives you um, great ideas. Come up with a beautiful mobile app design. Um, OK. Uh, if I had to ask a designer, uh, they would probably take weeks and all kinds of uh, research to come up with these kind of things. And now you have it within 10 seconds. Yeah, so uh, and if you don't like it, if you want different colors, you just ask it again. So the ideation process is really, really fast. So if you give like ChatGPT to developers, they become really better developers. If you give these tools to designers, they become really good designers. If you use any tool like for copywriting, you become a better copywriter. It's more like you have knowledge about your job, so you can use the tools better. So that's also one way of how we see it. It empowers you and it will, someone that has nothing to do with design will not use mid-journey and replace your job, uh, I yeah. think, because it's not a designer. And we as developers don't have to make these ugly designs anymore, right? We can use <laughs> these kind of tools yeah. to do themselves, do it ourselves as well if we don't have a designer there. Um, Another thing, if you need to have some app icons, have Midjourney created for you. Uh, yeah. For inspiration, at yeah. least. At least for inspiration, but you could also just yeah. use them in the app. Uh, I think yep. these look better than most of the app icons uh, that of the actual apps that I have on my phone. <laughs> so, so there's things, yeah. What about copyright? So it's generating stuff and it's all based on other artists. Uh, there are also some lawsuits against these uh, companies uh, do, that do this AI, but it's also like, what does an artist do? Um, he knows Van Gogh, he knows Mozart, uh, uh, Mozart uh, <laughs> Rembrandt, uh, that's uh, not an uh, artist. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he combines those styles and then he creates his own style. You can think of it like that. It uses from a lot of sources and then has his own style. Yeah, it uh, does not copy paste things no. from other sources, it, it learns from other sources. So if you go and visit a museum and look at a lot of paintings and then go painting yourself, that would be the same uh, action, right? You've seen things, you learn from it, and then you apply it yourself. And that's what, that's what AI is doing as well. It learns from all the things that it sees and then comes up with its own interpretation of that. Only the time span is seconds instead of years of making your own painting, of course. But yeah. it's the same idea. But there are still ongoing uh, lawsuits about this, right? So there, it, it, it will be a war about people um, yeah, who created a lot of stuff and put a lot of effort in, in doing certain things, and now that being yeah, gone in seconds, uh, replaced by, by AI. So yeah, we will see more and more of these uh, lawsuits until yeah, in the end, it's somewhere it's, uh, it's settled. So some other tools that we, we came across, we don't have access to this one yet, but I, I was amazed by these kind of things. Um, just creating some, some videos where you do some movements and then, okay, make it uh, in this style with this image and then it actually generates that video for you. Uh, if, you if you search for it, um, uh, it's called Gen 1. It has some really great examples of people just filming, uh, them walking around and then asking the AI, can you please make a, a cartoon out of this? And then it actually transforms that video into a cartoon. It's, it's really yep. um, promising things that... So let's also it. think about the workflow. Like you could create your image with Midjourney as your style and then apply it to, to this Gen 1. Also, also see you see some sh shape shifting going on and these AIs will only get better. So this shape shifting will get uh, better and all the bugs uh, will be less, so AIs become better and better. Mm -hmm. 
done some other tools, uh, moving away from uh, images or videos, actually creating royalty-free um, sound. Uh, there's certain artists who create videos that, uh, that you could uh, or create music that you could use in your streaming, etc. But there's also tools that just generate music on itself. You just give it a style, a tempo, um, uh, and then from there on it can generate music for you in a certain length. That also, that's also royalty free, so you could use it within your YouTube videos or streams or, or whatever. So a lot of creativity that you could use within your own workflows um, yeah, when, when building uh, software development. So we really see our developer toolbox in more increasing and increasing with all kinds of tools that you could use when building your software. And not only um, for writing the actual software, but also writing blog posts. I, I had Copilot enabled when I was writing some blog posts, and it, it just fills out certain uh, paragraphs when I'm typing uh, out certain things. So it can really yeah, help you um, make, things, make things faster. So also, if you have to write documentation for your end users, why do that all by yourself? AI yeah, can help, really help you do it and also do it in certain styles uh, so it fits the, uh, the reading profile of your, uh, of your users. Um, help with installation guides, etc. You can just tell it, okay, I want to do this and this. Can you explain this in 10 steps? Or if you read it through, okay, please make it 20 steps so it's more, um, more strict in actually what you need to do. Yep. So um, all I'll kind of things. Like use it for anything, I would say. Yeah, for session abstracts. Yeah, if yeah. you want to be here next year, just come up with a title, have it. Uh, think of a uh, session abstract, and you might be here on stage as well next and year. There are a lot of resources on the internet that just list UI AI tools, which you maybe want to investigate. Just uh, go look at the ecosystem, I would say. Yeah, especially ChatGPT, et yeah. cetera. They're, they're free to use in the initial tier, right? So uh, they released a new version yesterday. So if you try it out tonight, it's probably really busy by all kinds of people trying out the new version. So there might be some, some wait times. But even even the subscription is like 20 euros a month. Um, I think if you look at uh, the, the amount of productivity you get from that, it's, it's, it's quite worth the, the money. So if you want to convince your boss, I think uh, you should be fairly easy to do that. So um, yeah, to wrap up, um, AI will not yet replace you. Um, yeah. <laughs> people using AI might replace you or will replace you. Uh, yeah, add AI to your workflow. As you saw, as I was developing, I'm now only using AI, and I even forgot to use one AI. Uh, yeah, I, I also I forgot you can also generate Git commit messages with AI. So uh, I forgot to demo that, but it, I can still show it if uh, if, if yeah, we have we time. Yeah, uh, well, we're we're How around much at time, but it's called yeah. AI commits. If you just yeah. it's it's connected into your IDE. So if you did some changes, then ask AI commits, okay, what did I do? And it will create a commit message for you. So uh, <laughs> all these small quirks to help you build better software. So, so yeah, with that, check out tools. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>